If I wasn't mistaken, I would say I'm looking at an aerial satellite image of Stonehenge. They both have concentric circles with a square or a rectangle in the middle. Its purpose still isn't known for sure, but it seems to be aligned towards astronomical events like winter and summer solstices. The visual similarities provoke speculation the weird Martian formation could serve a similar purpose. Are we looking at something that might be the equivalent of Stonehenge on Mars, a Mars Henge? These are NASA's Unexplained Files. 217 BC, Italy. The Roman Republic is in the midst of a bloody war with Carthage. Witnesses at the Roman city of Capena report seeing something that defies belief. There's reports of eyewitnesses observing two moons rising in the sky. If you see two moons in the sky up here all of a sudden, um, you're gonna be pretty shocked. The Romans take the sightings as a portent of doom. Can you imagine as a soldier marching into battle and seeing two moons rising in the sky? That's a terrible omen. It could easily spell disaster. Shortly after, the Romans suffer their worst defeat of the war as two legions are ambushed and drowned on the banks of Lake Trasimene. It looks like the omen came true. But that's impossible. Today, with modern science, we know it's not possible to have had two moons at that time. So what was going on? So the question is, what were they seeing? Modern scientists know the ancient Romans could not have seen a second moon in the sky. But could they have seen a different celestial body? One linked to omens throughout history. Well, one idea is it could have been a comet. Before we understood their nature, comets were portents of doom because they came and went unexpectedly. The characteristics of comets make them a promising candidate. Comets are very bright, they show up during daytime, and they can get very large. As a comet gets closer and closer to the sun, the radiation pressure from the sun heats it up and makes it essentially glow. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter. They also can stick around for many days. Although comets have a distinctive tail, if observed from the right angle, they would be invisible. If you see that from the front, you don't see the tails. What you see is maybe the nucleus and the gases surrounding it. So to a Roman soldier out in the field, he could look up in the sky and during daytime and see the real moon and then see this other object up there, and it could look like a moon to him. But that would mean that the comet was on a collision course with Earth, and none of the reports mention a cataclysmic impact. So could the mysterious moon actually be a larger object? but further away. Could it have been a planet? Well, we know that there are other planets visible at various points in time in the evening sky. Could Mars look large enough to appear to be a second moon? In August 2003, Mars made its closest approach to the Earth for nearly 60,000 years. People expected to go out and see Mars in the sky almost the size of the full moon, but Sorry, it was nothing like that. Mars did look bigger than it ever had done before, but it was still just a tiny speck of light. Nobody would ever mistake that for a second moon. No planet in our solar system could ever look large enough to be mistaken for a moon, even by superstitious Romans. But the Earth, once having a second moon, is far from ridiculous. The idea of having more than one moon in the sky is only odd on Earth. Many planets have multiple moons. Jupiter and Saturn have 60 moons. In fact, it is possible that the sphere so familiar in our night sky started out as two separate moons. 
the data suggests that in the ancient past, the Earth was hit with an object the size of Mars, and debris was thrown up around the Earth that later coalesced to form the moon. But it may have not coalesced into one object all at once. What if it coalesced into two objects? Some scientists believe that two moons into one explains why one side of the moon is flat while the other bulges outwards. We think that you ended up with a moon that's two objects that have now become one. And that's why the crust on one side of the moon is very different from the crust on the other side. But if Earth did once have two moons, it was a very long time before the Roman sightings. This process took place four billion years ago, millions and millions of years before the existence of the Roman Republic. There's no way that those soldiers saw any of this. And that is just as well, because if the moon had an identical twin, the combined gravitational forces would have horrifying consequences. The effects on Earth would be devastating. You'd have tsunamis, you'd have giant tidal waves. The rotation of the Earth would change. You'd have atmospheric effects, huge storms. This is something that we do not want to see. But the Romans are not alone. Throughout history, there have been numerous reports of two moons. No single explanation has been able to account for these dramatic sightings. The mystery remains unexplained. Since September 2006, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has been taking high-resolution images of the surface of the Red Planet. Five years into its mission, the probe captures something puzzling. Long streaks appear on the Martian slopes, and no one knows what they are. The odd thing is that these surface markings disappear, reappear, and then disappear again. These streaks are a big mystery. We don't know exactly how they form, at least not all of them. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they disappear. Mars has fearsome, powerful storms that scour its surface. Could they be responsible for these mysterious streaks? As the orbit of Mars draws closer to the sun, we see more dust storms across the surface of the planet. The sun heats the surface, the air rises, and dust, sometimes covering half of the entire planet, can rage for months. Imagine you're exploring the surface. Off in the distance, you would see it grow darker and darker. A monstrous cloud, 300, 600 feet high, would be approaching you. In this cloud would be lightning bolts snapping the ground. This would be a huge global Martian dust storm coming your way. But evidence from Mars rover suggests that dust storms scour a surface clean. They don't leave localized streaks across the ground. On Earth, similar looking streaks are caused by water interacting with salt in a desert environment. In 2015, a NASA probe photographed streaks in another Martian crater. It picks up the spectrographic signature of salt. When it passes over again, the streaks have grown. One pass, it takes a picture of these gullies. Over the next pass, a few months later, now there's an expansive patch of salt. This can only mean one thing. Water somehow had to have flowed out and deposited the salt. But there isn't supposed to be any water on the surface of Mars. We know that you can't have standing water on Mars. It's a well-known fact that the pressure isn't high enough, the temperature's too low. Mars is a really dry place. It is a desert in the extreme, extreme way. The very presence of salt water turns accepted wisdom on its head. 
We had been thinking that Mars was a place that was so cold, so dry, that it rendered the flow of liquid water as impossible. But if you actually put enough of a special kind of salt inside this water, if you dissolve it, all of a sudden you allow that water to remain liquid even at very low temperatures. Analysis of the light reflected from the deposits reveal what it's made of. The closest match is a salt called perchlorate. Perchlorates in high concentrations in liquid water can lower the freezing temperature water down to minus 70 degrees C. That's extraordinary. Minus 70 degrees Celsius is minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Remarkably, perchlorates can keep water flowing even at such extreme temperatures. This would explain why the water could last as long as it did traveling down slope before it disappeared and vanished. But it doesn't explain where the water came from in the first place. A close analysis of the images suggests an exciting possibility. These streaks don't originate at the top of the crater. They actually seem to be coming out part way down. This corresponds to an underground level, maybe an aquifer running water underground. It's coming from underneath the surface of Mars. It's underground water that's coming out. The implications are profound. So this was an important observation because it tells you that liquid water is still flowing at the surface of Mars today. And where there's liquid water, at least on Earth, there's always life. For life on Mars, conditions would be extreme. Some microbes on Earth like perchlorates. They don't mind being in an environment rich in perchlorates, but not at the concentrations that are needed to keep water liquid on Mars. But what we consider to be a hostile environment might not be that hostile for all kinds of all forms of life. Maybe it can find a way to survive and thrive in that kind of extreme environment. Fish thrive in the boiling hot sulfur pools of the Marianas Trench, showing that life always finds a way. Certainly, as we learn more about life, we learn that it can tolerate more extreme environments than we had thought. Certainly, more extreme environments than we humans tend to think of as habitable. So, I would not exclude the possibility of life on Mars even today. The discovery of salty water oozing from below the Martian surface opens up an important new avenue in our search for life on Mars. There might be life on Mars, and we're just not finding it because we're only on the surface and it's underground. We're looking in the wrong place. September 25th, 2012. NASA's $720 million Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter circles 170 miles above the red planet. Its state-of-the-art high-rise camera captures a remarkable image. This image from high-rise shows a cluster of rocks. They seem to be oriented in a general set of concentric circles. The symmetry is strange. What's even more intriguing is that they are sitting on a mound. It just seems to be sized perfectly. Like many terrestrial monuments, the rocks form a circle around an inner grouping of larger stones. This reminds me very much of something we have right here on Earth. And that something is Stonehenge. If I wasn't mistaken, I would say I'm looking at an aerial satellite image of Stonehenge. They both have concentric circles with a square or a rectangle in the middle. It's exactly what I'm looking at here. The famous circle at Stonehenge is more than 5,000 years old and has mystified archaeologists for centuries. At this sacred place, pagan priests of ancient Druid cults communed with the stars. Its purpose still isn't known for sure, but it seems to be aligned towards astronomical events like winter and summer solstices. The visual similarities provoke speculation the weird Martian formation could serve a similar purpose. 
Are we looking at something that might be the equivalent of Stonehenge on Mars, a Marshenge? You have to ask yourself, is this evidence of civilization on Mars? To date, there is no evidence to support the existence of monument builders on Mars. Some planetary scientists have a more natural explanation for Marshenge. On Earth, whenever we see unusual rock formations, you know, the geologists will consider that maybe they've been shaped or influenced by seismic activity. Theoretically, violent seismic shaking could push the Mars hinge rocks up through the Martian dirt and deposit them on the surface. It's like taking a, a box of cereal that has fruit in it, and you shake the box and the fruit all comes to the top. Same mechanism. But there's a big problem with the Marsquake theory. We don't know if Mars has Mars quakes. We've never made the measurement. You know, we don't know if the interior of Mars is active like the interior of the Earth. Another possible clue to the origin of Mars Henge could come from a strange phenomenon on our own planet in Death Valley, California. Here on Earth in Death Valley, for instance, there are rocks that seem to just move on their own. And we know what that's from. There's ice underneath the rocks and winds propel them very slowly across the desert, leaving little trails. So the question is, could this be happening on Mars? Astronomers have found evidence that ice can form on Mars. But close analysis of the image suggests that it cannot account for the arrangement of the Mars hinge boulders. These rocks are sitting up on top of a peak, and it would take a lot of wind to move a rock on a lot of ice to get it up on top of a peak like this. And on Mars, we don't have air that's dense enough to make that much of a forceful wind that could drive a giant boulder. The giant boulders were not, it seems, pushed there by Martian winds. A different theory suggests the rocks might not be from Mars at all. Mars is constantly being bombarded by meteorites. There are impact craters all across its surface. Is it possible that this structure is the result of a cratering event? Image analysis seems to support this idea. If we zoom out a little more, we see there's actually a larger circular pattern. Now, what is that? Maybe this is a sediment-filled crater. NASA calculates that around 200 asteroids smash into the red planet every year. Could one of these impacts have created Mars Henge? It's unlikely that a large impact would leave a collection of large boulders at the bottom of the crater. If it was a large enough asteroid to make a crater, that asteroid would actually break up into smaller and smaller pieces and you would see the ejecta outside the crater. And that's not what we see in this case. In 2020, NASA will send a next-generation rover to explore the Martian surface. One of its objectives is to investigate the geological processes that created the Red Planet's strange landscape. Until then, the origin of the mysterious Mars Henge will remain unexplained. This is one of those cases where we probably won't know the answer to how this rock formation formed until we get on the ground at that location.